be for you as you keep doing area it's just you figure out what um, shape you're doing and then apply that formula so area of a circle is pi r squared so what you're going to do is here's a circle they Wait, might, how do you write i uh you just do like a uh wiggly line and then two lines down so this uh, right here is called the radius sometimes they give you the radius sometimes they give you the diameter here's the diameter it is the whole inside part of the middle part of the circle now say they say the diameter is six and they say the radius is three the radius is always half of the diameter and the diameter is always two times of the radius. So suppose they gave you the diameter here and not the radius. So suppose they said diameter equals six, but you have to find R, right? Because they're not saying that it's pi diameter squared. You would just cut this in half. So you would do divided by two equals three, and this becomes your R. Does that make sense? So you just yeah. divide it in half. If they give you radius, then you just plug in the number they give you. So this would be area equals pi r squared. So order of operations tells us that we have to do this first because it is an exponent. And you know PEMDAS says that we do exponents first. So we're going to write out a equals pi, 3 squared is 9, right? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. And then on your calculator, if you can't use a calculator, that's okay. Then you would just uh, find uh, what this is by hand. You're going to do 3.14 is what we use for pi times 9 equals 28.26 so the area is 28.26 and then say this was in centimeters then you're going to write centimeters squared remember area is always units squared so that is how you find the area of a circle and then sometimes they want you to find the circumference of the circle so the area is this right here the inside of the circle the circumference is the area around the circle is called the circumference so for circumference it's 2 pi r that's the formula c equals 2 times 3.14 times radius. So if we had our radius as three centimeters, we would do C equals two. And then we would figure that out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we would do two times times 3 and it's 18.84 centimeters squared centimeter uh circumference make sense yeah okay Sorry. and for algebra here's how we do algebra a plus 5 equals 10 they will use a letter and then they'll use numbers. Have you done algebra at all before, honey? Um, no. Okay, so what they're saying is there's a letter. It's, it's a number, but we don't know what the number is. So our goal is to solve, to figure out what this letter is. Now, this is a pretty easy one. What yeah, number right. would you substitute here? You could very clearly see that it's a five, right? 
but in algebra we have to show how we would get that number if we couldn't just plug it in because well, it's actually not... yeah I guess uh we have done algebra a little bit okay so what we're gonna do we can just see that it's five but we can't just see and have that be what we put. We have to do something for each algebra problem. Even if we know it's a five, we have to follow these steps. So here's my problem. And we're gonna say they're adding five. So we have to subtract five. Our goal is to get all of the numbers over here and all of the letters over here. And the only way to bring this five over here is to do the opposite of what they're doing. So they're adding five, we subtract five. And then we have two sides of the equation. What we do to this side, we have to do to this side. So if we subtract five on this side, we have to subtract five on this side. And then you see how this is plus five minus five, this cancels each other out. It's no longer part of this side of the equation. What's left on this side is a, and then we solve what is 10 minus five? Five. Yep. Yeah, five. Right. So that's how we do it. This is obviously an easy one. It's not gonna stay this easy. These are just basic algebra problems. Okay, if they did this, so our, our goal is still to get our numbers on one side and our letters on the other. So since the letter's already here, I'm gonna keep it here. How do I get the number over here? They're subtracting five, I have to do the opposite. So if they're subtracting five, I add five. And what I do to one side of the equation, I do to the other. This cancels each other out. What's left on this side is A, and then 50 plus five is 55. Make sense? Uh -huh. Okay, there's another problem that you might see. It's 2b equals 20. So when they put a letter next to a number, like this, there's a number and a letter, this means multiplication. So what's the opposite of multiplication? Divide. Mm -hmm. So we divide, and how we show it is we make it into a fraction. So we're gonna divide by two here. Anything we do to one side, we do to the other. So if we divide this by two, we divide this by two. This cancels each other out because it turns into just one B or just B. And then we do the math on this side. 20 divided by two is 10. Make sense? Yep. Okay. And then for dividing, They're dividing x divided by 5 equals 50. So if they're dividing, we're going to multiply, and this is how we show multiplying. This cancels each other out. What's left on this side is x. What's left on this side, 5 times 5 is 25 with a 0 at the back. So x equals 250. Now the cool thing is to figure out if you're right or not, all you have to do is plug the number that you got here into the letter that's in the original problem. So we're saying a equals five, right? So our original problem was a plus five equals 10. We're gonna substitute five everywhere we see an a in this problem, which in this case, it's just one time. And then if this is true, is five plus five 10? Yes, 10 equals 10. Then we got the problem correct. If for some reason, say you got a six here, you did some calculation that was wrong, and you plugged in your six equals plus five equals 10, you would say, oh, that's not correct. So our answer would be no. We would know to go back and redo the problem. Does that make sense to you? Yep. Perfect. All right. A minus five equals 50, so we can rewrite the problem here. And then we're gonna do A equals 55. We're gonna plug in 55 minus five equals 50. And then we solve 50 equals 50, is that correct? Yes. 
And then for this one, we're gonna substitute two times 10 equals 20. Does 20 equal 20? Yes. And then same thing for this. So our original problem was x over five equals 50. I substituted my 250 over five. Does that equal 50? Uh -huh. Yes. 